So from this day forward, it'll be a policy of the United States to do whatever it takes to lead the world in artificial intelligence. We will be adding at least as much electric capacity as China. China's not doing it, and if you're going to be beating China, and right now we're leading China, many of our largest tech companies have reaped the blessings of American freedom while building their factories in China. We need U.S. technology companies to be all in for America. We want you to put America first. You have to do that. That's all we ask. That's all we ask. You can't be expected to have a successful AI program when every single article, book, or anything else that you've read or studied, you're supposed to pay for. When you do your best, when you work your hardest, and when you're allowed to be free of horrible, foolish regulation, and you're going to have regulation, but it's going to be sensible, smart regulation, there's nobody who's going to beat you. The U.S. government might soon own a piece of the future. Literally, reports are breaking that the Trump administration is in direct talks to take equity stakes, not grants, not contracts, but actual ownership shares in several fast-rising quantum computing companies. If this happens, it would mark one of the most aggressive tech investments ever made by the U.S. government. And guess what? The stock market just lit up. Now, before you scroll past thinking just another political headline, think again. Because behind this story are some of the most intriguing and undervalued tech stocks in the entire market. Companies working on quantum breakthroughs that could shape everything from AI to cybersecurity. From drug design to national defense, this isn't just a government policy update. It's potentially one of the biggest investing signals we've seen all year. So, make sure you hit that subscribe button if you love catching early stock. Stories before Wall Street fully wakes up, because this one could be massive. All right, here's what's going down, according to multiple reports. First from the Wall Street Journal, and later confirmed by Reuters and Investing.com, the E U.S. Commerce Department is in active talks with several private and public quantum computing firms. The goal? To offer funding packages of at least $10 million per company, but instead of giving that money away as a grant, the government would take a direct ownership stake in return. That's right. Washington wants to act more like an investor than a donor. And that's a huge shift in how America is approaching emerging technologies. Think of it like this. For decades, the U.S. has supported innovation through subsidies and research grants. But this time, the government wants equity. It wants a seat at the table. It wants skin in the game. And when a government starts buying stakes in private companies, it's not just about profits. It's about power, strategy, and control of the future. Because quantum computing isn't your average tech story. It's the backbone of what could be the next industrial revolution. One that determines who leads the world in computing power, data security, and artificial intelligence. Quantum computers don't rely on the same binary logic as your laptop or phone. Instead of bits that can be zero or one, they use qubits, which can exist as both zero and one simultaneously. That means they can process millions of calculations at once, solving problems that would take today's supercomputers thousands of years. That's why governments and corporations are racing to develop quantum machines and by the Trump administration's sudden interest in owning pieces of quantum firms has Wall Street watching closely. But which companies are we talking about here? According to reports, the discussions include a handful of leading American quantum pioneers, all with different technologies, different goals, and different risk profiles for investors. Let's start with one of the most recognizable names in this space, IonQ, ticker IonQ. Based in Maryland, IonQ is a pioneer in trapped ion quantum computing. Their hardware uses individual atoms as qubits, allowing for extremely precise calculations with long coherence times. The company went public a few years ago and has been viewed as the U.S. face of quantum hardware development. If the government takes a stake here, it signals a deep vote of confidence in IonQ's long-term scalability. Then there is Rigetti Computing, ticker RGTI. This company builds superconducting qubit systems, a different technology, but one heavily backed by research from NASA and the Department of Energy. Rigetti already has federal contracts and partnerships, so a move toward partial government ownership would be a natural next step. The company's stock has seen huge volatility, but that also means any official confirmation of federal involvement could send it skyrocketing. The third player is D-Wave Quantum, ticker QBTS. Unlike the others, D-Wave focuses on quantum annealing, a more specialized form of quantum computing that's already being used commercially. They've been building practical quantum systems for over two decades, and they've recently launched cloud-based quantum services. A U.S. government stake in D-Wave would mean the administration is open to supporting multiple technological approaches, not just one architecture. Next is Quantum Computing Inc., ticker QUBT, a smaller company that focuses on quantum software and algorithm optimization rather than hardware. 
Their goal is to bridge the gap between classical and quantum computing through hybrid solutions. A government investment here would validate the growing importance of software in making quantum computing usable for real-world applications. And finally, Atom Computing, a private firm that's been turning heads in Silicon Valley. They use neutral atoms as qubits, an approach that could enable quantum systems to scale faster than traditional methods. Atom has raised hundreds of millions in venture funding, and government backing could propel them into the elite circle of global quantum leaders. Now, you might be wondering, why would the government want to own these companies? Why not just fund them like usual? Two words, strategy and security. Quantum computing has become a matter of national security. The country that leads in quantum will have the ability to break current encryption systems, create unhackable communication networks, and simulate complex systems like nuclear reactions or drug molecules in seconds. China is already investing billions in this field, and the European Union isn't far behind. The U.S. doesn't want to be left behind, especially when the technology could reshape the global balance of power. By taking equity stakes, Washington ensures that these technologies and the companies behind them stay under American influence. It's also a way to make sure taxpayer money has upside potential. If one of these quantum firms becomes the next NVIDIA of computing, the government, and indirectly the taxpayers, share in the reward, and the market clearly loves this story. As soon as the reports hit the news, quantum-related stocks jumped across the board. IonQ spiked, Brigetti rallied, D-Wave and QUBT saw massive trading volume, and even private firms like Atom Computing gained more investor interest. It's a classic case of smart money moving up early. Institutional investors understand that government backing often changes everything. Credibility, funding access, and long-term demand all improve overnight. And there's another twist. Earlier this year, the government reportedly took a 10% equity stake in Intel through a similar mechanism tied to Chips Act funding. That may have been a test run. If that model worked for semiconductors, quantum computing could be next. Still, it's worth noting that these are early-stage discussions. Reuters has made it clear no deals are finalized yet. Some officials even downplayed the idea of negotiations. But even so, the mere fact that these talks are happening shows just how seriously the U.S. is taking the quantum race. For investors, that's where opportunity often begins. Not after a deal is signed, but when the market is still unsure what's real and what's rumor. Now, let's be clear, these companies are still in early growth phases. They're not printing profits or dominating balance sheets yet. Most are focused on R&D and partnerships. But when you combine cutting-edge technology with government-level backing, you create a foundation for long-term upside. In other words, this story isn't about short-term trading. It's about positioning before the rest of the market catches on. Here's the bottom line. When the U.S. government starts acting like a venture capitalist, it's not just investing in companies. It's investing in control over the future.